It's about Hurricane Ian. I'm joined here by our Division of Emergency Management Director, Kevin Guthrie, uh, the head of the Florida National Guard, Jim Eifert, um, and Gracia Check. Thank you for coming for our FEMA uh, Regional uh, Coordinator. Uh, as of 11 a.m., the storm is located roughly 375 miles south of Key West, and it's moving north-northwest at about 14 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds are now up to 80 miles an hour, uh, and it moves into the Gulf where it's expected to strengthen into a major hurricane in the eastern Gulf of Mexico as early as tomorrow. Uh, it will bring heavy rain, strong winds, flash flooding, storm surge, along with isolated tornado activity along Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, Floridians up and down the Gulf Coast should feel the impacts of this as up to 36 hours before um, actual landfall due to the size of the hurricane. This is a really, really big hurricane at this point. Uh, the diameter, uh, the, the width of it's about 500 miles wide. Uh, so if you look at the, the cone and if you look at where they have the landfall going, I think the landfall is still Levy County. Uh, the impacts are going to be much, much broader than that. Of course, that track is still uh, uncertain. It could absolutely wobble further into the peninsula or even further away from the peninsula. Uh, you will see storm surge in places like southwest Florida, even though the storm is projected to be 100 or 150 miles uh, off the coast of southwest Florida. And so you look in Collier County, they've already issued manda or, or voluntary evacuations for some of their coastal communities because the storm surge is likely to be significant given how big the storm is. A tropical storm warning has been issued for a portion of the Florida Keys from the Seven Mile Bridge south to Key West. Hurricane and tropical storm watches have been issued from Inglewood south to Naples. Uh, we also have storm surge watches in effect from Pinellas County down to the Florida Keys. Those watches are anticipated to become warnings later today. Uh, now, some counties have begun issuing uh, evacuation orders or voluntary evacuations. Uh, the important thing for people to know is to know the zone that you're in. Uh, you will have counties probably throughout uh, this morning and into this afternoon uh, identifying areas that are vulnerable for evacuation. So you should anticipate that if you're on counties uh, in Florida's Gulf Coast. Of course, as you go further north in Florida, there is a little bit more time uh, before those decisions have to be made. So as we get into the northern Florida and into the panhandle, uh, those decisions may not be today, but certainly for South West and, and Tampa Bay, uh, be on the lookout for that because I know we've been conferring with a lot of the local officials uh, that those, those are going to happen. The way to go is to go to floridadisaster.org slash plan prepare, floridadisaster.org slash plan prepare. That will be able to allow you to look to see whether you are in an evacuation zone. And so if they do call for an evacuation of, say, Zone A, and you're in Zone A, then you know that, and you can take the appropriate action. The Florida Department of Transportation is now suspending tolls uh, at facilities in the Tampa Bay area, uh, the Polk Park Parkway in, in uh, Polk County, Mid Bay Bridge in Okaloosa, Spence Parkway in Okaloosa, Garson Point Bridge in Santa Rosa, um, and of course all the Tampa Bay area, uh, Pinellas Byway, Sunshine Skyway, Selman Expressway, I-4 Connector in Hillsboro, as well as Alligator Alley down in Collier into Broward counties. And as we continue to monitor the path of Hurricane Ian, uh, we may do more toll suspensions in other parts of the state uh, if that is warranted. Some school districts have announced uh, school closures for the, this upcoming week, and you may see more as the track becomes more certain. If you want to look at the most updated information regarding schools, uh, you can get that at fldoe.org slash storm info. That's fldoe.org slash storm info. The Florida National Guard has activated 5,000 Florida Guardsmen as well as 2,000 additional Guardsmen from Tennessee, Georgia, and North Carolina that have been activated to help. We have also have five urban search and rescue teams that are activated. We have Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission mobilized and ready to support needed efforts. 
And of course, the U.S. Coast Guard is also willing and able to assist in both preparation and response. Uh, of course, we've declared a state of emergency for, for the entire state, given the uncertainty uh, that exists. Of course, as we go every hour, we get a little bit more certainty in the general area, and we know that this is going to have major impacts on, on Florida's golf course, uh, Gulf Coast. Uh, we've issued waivers of weight restrictions for commercial trucks to ensure we've ample fuel and resources coming into Florida. That make sure you're prepared. There's no need to panic by. Uh, if you normally don't drink a lot of water, you know, you may not need to go out and buy 20 gallons of water right now. Uh, so just do what you need to be prepared. Uh, we were been in contact with some of the major retailers like Publix and Walmart. They are constantly resupplying. I know Publix did way more than they normally do, and a lot of that is flying off the shelves. But just know uh, there's an effort to be made to make sure that those shelves are restocked as quickly as possible. We've also authorized emergency refills of maintenance prescriptions for 30 days. And we would anticipate anyone as part of your hurricane preparedness plan, make sure you have the prescriptions uh, that you need. Uh, we've also been in contact with uh, the major utilities uh, throughout the state of Florida, particularly those that are servicing the Gulf Coast of Florida, uh, FPNL, Duke Energy, TECO, the municipal electric providers, as well as the rural electrical co-ops. And I can tell you, uh, between all of those, I mean, there are tens of thousands of people that are staged uh, and that are going to be ready to go when the storm passes to try to get power restored. But folks should, should be prepared, if you're in this region, uh, that there is going to be an interruption of power. So just, just plan on that. Uh, understand that, that that will happen. Uh, even if the storm, the, the eye of the storm, doesn't hit your region, you're going to have really significant winds. Uh, it's going to knock over trees. It's going to cause interruptions. And so that's just the name of the game. So just be prepared for that. Uh, and then they have the resources in place where, of course, that's going to be a priority once it's safe to go in there and get uh, as much power back on as quickly as possible. Make sure that you have your plan uh, in place. Finish whatever preparations you have. I mean, we're, we're, this thing is coming uh, this week, and, and, and we know that, and, and we know we're going to have some major impacts throughout the state of Florida. We have at the Department here for Emergency Management received 338 requests for assistance from local counties. Uh, 293 of those have already been fulfilled, and others are on the way. Uh, we've deployed 210 medical professionals to Hillsborough County special needs shelters and another 120 to surrounding counties. We have 300 ambulances supporting special needs evacuations in the Tampa Bay area, and hundreds of generators and pumps have also been staged in the Tampa Bay area to prepare uh, for the flooding that we're anticipating. So please continue to monitor your local weather service for updates. Uh, make sure that you're commencing your storm preparations. Uh, visit floridadisaster.org slash get a plan uh, to see some of the things um, that, that, that may need to be done. For all you new Floridians who haven't been through one of these before, uh, just understand, just remain calm. There, there's no need to panic. Uh, listen to the folks at the local level. Listen to what they advise in terms of uh, preparations, any, any evacuations. Uh, if you are going to be in your home when the power goes out and you have one of the generators, just understand those generators must be operated outside the home. Every year, we tend to have people that operate it inside their home. You know, you will, you will get poisoning from carbon monoxide, and we have fatalities uh, for that. In fact, we've had more fatalities in recent storms from the use of the generators than we've had from the direct impact of the storm itself. So just understand it's great to have a generator. Obviously, we live in a very connected world. People want to have that power on, and I, and I understand that, and I do too. Uh, but make sure it's used properly, and that exhaust has got to be going outside your home. Do not let that come inside your home. So we're continuing to work with communities uh, at the local level. I've been able to speak with a number of the folks uh, today. Uh, we're going to continue to work to support uh, their plans. Obviously, at this point, we want everyone to be safe. Uh, you have a significant storm that may end up being a Category 4 hurricane, and I know they say it may slow down by the time it reaches landfall, but if you have that off the co west coast of Florida, that's going to cause a huge amount of storm surge. You're going to have flood events. You're going to have a lot of different impacts from that. So we want everybody to be safe. Uh, we want people to uh, weather the storm, and that ultimately is the most important thing. 
property damage and these things, you know, it's, it's terrible that that would happen in a storm, uh, but we can fix that and we can help rebuild, uh, but you got to take care of yourself and we want to make sure everybody is safe. Of course, as the storm hits and in the immediate aftermath, we have all these resources that are staged from our guard to fish and wildlife, uh, search and rescue, uh, to be able to help people that are in need. Uh, and then, of course, once the dust settles, uh, there's a premium on restoring power, fuel, communication, so that people uh, can resume normalcy as soon as possible. I want to let Kevin Guthrie come up here from our Department of Emergency Management. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor. Thank you for your leadership and support as we uh, move into Hurricane Ian. Uh, we currently have more than, as the Governor said, we have currently have more than 338 active missions for our local partners. We're working diligently to ensure all needs are met. Some of those needs you need to understand we're not going to get them to the uh, counties before landfall. Uh, that's typically an issue where they've asked for water or food but they have no place to house it. We cannot leave a semi-trailer just sitting in a parking lot with 110, 120 mile an hour winds. So that is the discrepancy between the number of uh, uh, missions that we have filled and the number of missions that we are responding to. So if that should come up. This includes providing uh, meals, waters, ambulance strike teams, oxygen, technical communication statewide. Uh, we have deployed several hundred shelter support staff, as the governor has already mentioned. We have also set up two logistical staging areas to provide immediate direct assistance after the storm's landfall. We will be operating one of those on the east side of the storm and one of those on the west side of the storm. We know that for many Floridians, this may be their first hurricane experience. As the governor said, do not panic. There is still time to get your preparations in order and safely evacuate if necessary. Remember to make a plan that works best for your family and business and include your children, pets, and seniors that you care for in your disaster preparedness plans. Know if you live in an evacuation zone. You can visit floridadisaster.org slash K-N-O-W or plan prepare to input your address and determine if you live in an evacuation zone. Evacuations are de evacuation zones are designated as zones A through F, with A generally being the most vulnerable and most likely to be evacuated first. Evacuations are issued at the local level, so make sure you have multiple ways to receive weather alerts and information from your local officials. We've received numerous inquiries from individuals navigating our Know Your Zone website. If you enter your address and you are not located in one of the colored coded areas, which is red, orange, yellow, green, or purple, then you do not live in an evacuation zone. If you do not live in an evacuation zone, you may be able to shelter in place. This is where we ask you to know your home. Can your home sustain hurricane wind speeds? If you live in a manufactured home, you need to evacuate. If you live in an older home that would not stand those winds, you need to evacuate. <laughs> If you are power dependent for your livelihood, you need to evacuate. If you are going to use a generator, as the governor mentioned, please do not operate it indoors. Do not operate it in your garage and make sure that you have plenty of distance from any open windows where you may be running cords through that window. For more updates in your area, remember to follow your local county emergency management agency and other public safety offices on social media. And you can always follow us on Facebook or on Twitter at FLCERT. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Jim. Sir. Good morning. The uh, Florida National Guard is fully engaged uh, with every resource we have available to bring to bear on the problem. Uh, we have also been in constant contact with our neighboring states primarily Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, uh, let's see, Louisiana, have all responded um, with, uh, with uh, promptness to be able to provide additional resources as we find gaps and seams in our own ability to respond uh, for the citizens of Florida. So I couldn't be happier and uh, more appreciative of our neighboring states being willing to uh, uh, provide those resources to us and some of them are actually already even starting to move so that we can uh, have them in place when we need them. 
We're also assessing constantly the location and uh, path of the storm and repositioning and pre-positioning our resources and our people to be able to most immediately and effectively respond uh, once the uh, landfall has, uh, has passed. So uh, we're here, we're ready. We're uh, excited about the opportunity to continue to serve our citizens in Florida. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Yeah, Governor, uh, considering the fragility of the insurance market, do you have concerns about how insurers are going to fare here and what can the state do about it? Well, obviously, I mean, we've, you know, we, we just did a, a special session. We put $2 billion into, into a fund to provide a backstop. It kept a lot of them from going out of business. Um, and this is a problem that, that we're going to continue to, to tackle. Clearly, there's other things legislatively I would like to see done. I think we will get that done soon. Um, but uh, this is something that, that we will respond to. First of all, we're in a we're a strong state. We've got a huge amount of financial wherewithal right now, uh, so we'll be able to uh, uh, to get through it. But uh, if you're asking, would I rather not have had a storm hit us? The answer is yes. Clarify, is this going to be a storm sort of that where Irma was like 400 miles wide and was able to almost hit both sides of this, uh, both coasts at the same time? Are we, this sounds like it might actually be bigger. Are we going to, with that said, are, what sort of challenges is DM going to face with logistics? Because I think they used to have the warehouse in Orlando, but I think there are plans to change that. So uh, the, the answer is, is, I mean, I think we've said, I mean, you could have impacts in southeast florida flooding that's absolutely could happen uh, you could see impacts uh, on the east coast of florida f farther up for sure i mean i think people should should anticipate that um and, you know the further off the the coast it is obviously that that is that is beneficial for us in in that respect there's still a little bit uncertainty on the exact track uh, that's been taken i think we're going to know a lot more as it gets even and past Cuba. And then at that point, I think we're going to have a pretty good sense of what's going on. But this has really developed into a really big storm. And that means just the impacts are going to be far and wide. I mean, the fact that you're looking at, uh, if you look at the current track, how far off Naples it will be when it gets gets uh, parallel to Naples, yet you're going to see major storm surge even even that far off, off the coast, to have the eye of the storm that far off the coast. So I think that's indicative of, of, of what we're dealing with here. We've seen a major traffic buildup from mass evacuations. Is that a concern this time? Of course. I mean, when you have uh, millions of people in a metro area, um, you, you, no matter how how it's done, you are going to have you're going to have traffic. I mean, that's just the reality. We've suspended the tolls to try to help uh, get that get that going better. Uh, I do think because uh, the counties uh, have been engaged in this uh, early. Uh, this is something that they've been talking about. That they've been warning people uh, to, to make the preparations. Uh, I think you have, do have some people that, that have already decided uh, to, to, to do that even before uh, they've had anything done. But, but I think people, when they're on the road, should just anticipate that however it takes you to normally get from one place to another, it's going to just take you longer. I mean, that's just the reality. So just, be, just prepare for that, uh, and that's something that, uh, that, that will happen. How are we feeling about the fuel situation in the state? Because I know there are some parts of Tampa that are concerned that gas stations are already running out. So they're constantly resupplying the fuel, and th there have been some, but I think Kevin, by and large, I mean, it's getting resupplied in, in good order. Uh, there's no need to panic by fuel. Obviously, you need fuel, fill up your, your tank. Some people have some extra, that's fine. Uh, but we, uh, we, we are continuing to bring it in. Now, when the storm's coming, close hitting there's going to be some interruption to that so people should be prepared for that we do have contracts with folks that can bring some fuel in if necessary and we'll have to see whether that is uh, that is the case uh, we've not had to do that i don't think in the past but we do have the capability to do that if the storm hits uh, you have a, a need for fuel normal supply isn't getting there we could tap some of these contracts uh, that we have here uh, so, so people should just be prepared for there will, there will likely be some interruption uh, of fuel at some point, and the goal is to minimize that and keep that as, as small as possible. Perhaps. How are the, how are the ports going to operate? Uh, I know a lot of our fuel comes in from the ports, uh, so how are the ports preparing for this? I well, Kevin, I think Kevin can talk, but, but obviously, I mean, that's going to be an issue. So, Rick, we're on the ports. We, uh, we, we, we know we're going to not lose, but we're going to have to shut down Port of Tampa based on this scenario. Uh, at this point in time, the East Coast ports should remain open. There may be, to your point in a previous question, this is about a 500-mile wide storm. It's going to have some impacts on the other side. However, if 
We have that. Admiral Brendan McPherson will be here tomorrow from the United States Coast Guard. He is already preparing to expedite the opening of those ports and get them back open so we can get that in there. But right now, all ports are open and we're still taking fuel into the state so that we can get ourselves topped off. Yes, Bay Bridge is still open. General? General, have you requested permission to mobilize unvaccinated guardsmen? And could you talk about the impact of having nearly 10% of your force sidelined because of the military vaccine mandate uh, for your planning yeah, and the, readiness? <clears throat> the vaccine mandate does not impact our ability to bring people in on state active duty. So uh, regardless of what DOD may end up doing with those people, which is still undetermined, um, we will be activating all of those people in support of the citizens of Florida. Director Guthrie, um, from, because the track seems that, like it'll be spinning out uh, for several 48 hours, like off the coast of Florida, are, are on to us. Should um, people who are evacuating be prepared to stay for quite a long, much longer period of time than they might have been used to from previous storms and not return uh, before it's necessary? So, so uh, you know, I'm going to give kudos to uh, Monroe County after Hurricane Irma. Um, a lot of that stuff is driven at the local level and in with state supporting is trying to get that open back up. But um, I was just down in the Keys a couple of weeks ago for the uh, anniversary of Hurricane uh, Irma. And, you know, if you recall, the Keys were open in like 10 to 14 days for tourism and whatnot. I, we need to look at them or we need to use them as a best case example and start looking at lessons learned for all communities across the state of Florida to get those roads open. And let's get people back in here and let us get them back to work. Let's get them back to uh, tourism, which is you know, what we need to do. I don't believe we're going to run into a situation where we just cannot get certain things back up and running. We're gonna, that is going to be our number one priority. We're going to get power, fuel, communications back up and running so that we can get those roads open and get ourselves back to normal. Because we're not going to necessarily be remembered for how we respond. In the next 72 to you know 96 hours, we're going to be re remembered for how we recover, and this team in here is going to get that done. But the question one thing too, though, is that just I mean, if you look at if something like Tampa Bay, very vulnerable area, you, know, you could see significant flooding. So the initial um, you know response once the storm hits, assuming that you have bridges that are out of commission and and other. Uh, difficulties and even accessing the peninsula. Kevin has Chinook helicopters and they will be bringing in supplies uh, uh, via, via Hilo and, and dropping those off at probably the St. Pete Clearwater Airport, I would imagine, and doing that. So, so, but that's something for people to think about. You may have um, uh, flooding such that, that, that some of those places may not be, be accessed. And so that's not like government telling you you can't, you can't go back, but it's just the reality of, of what we could do. When you talk about some of the storm surge that they're, that they're uh, forecasting, you know, this is very significant storm surge for a very low-lying area. So that's going to have significant impact. All right, well, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do another briefing uh, later uh, later this afternoon, li likely down in Tampa Bay, and we may be back here uh, later tonight if there's any uh, major developments on the track. Thanks.